In the wake of Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine, our European allies have nearly tripled their import of U.S. LNG while significantly reducing their reliance on Russian natural gas. This deeply concerning decision puts American families sustaining jobs and security, the security of not only ourselves but our allies, and other partners around the globe at risk. I just heard the gentleman talk about you know, our obligation to our allies and, and as the basis for this crummy piece of legislation that we are now talking about. Really? To get a lecture from Republicans about our obligation to our allies, why they are blocking, why they are blocking aid to Ukraine as we speak? The Senate, you know, with a 70 vote uh, margin uh, passed in a bipartisan way, aid to provide essential aid to uh, Ukraine so that Putin will not have a victory, will not invade Ukraine. So when I hear my friend talk about an obligation to our allies, I would urge him to ask his speaker to please let the House work its will to bring this bill to the floor. Let us have a vote. Mr. Speaker, this, is the, this, is the, this will be the fourth time this Congress, the fourth time this Congress, that language either identical or nearly identical to this bill has been reported out of the Rules Committee. First, it passed as part of Republicans' destructive H.R. 1 energy package. Then, Republicans tried to pass it as a standalone bill, but had to pull the rule for the bill from the floor because they didn't have the votes. The third time this, uh, the, the bill was put on the floor, but it failed to pass because the MAGA clown show threw a fit after not getting what they wanted. And now, here we are again for the fourth time. Now, I don't know if my Republican friends uh, have looked at the calendar recently, but Groundhog Day was actually last week. Uh, I mean, maybe they think this is Nick at night and they want to start airing more reruns. But this is Congress. This is Congress. Congress. And the American people vote for us and they pay us because they expect us to work together to get things done. Now, the only real difference this fourth time around uh, is that Republicans, and you really can't make this stuff up, but Republicans blocked Democratic amendments that were made in order the last two times. The last two times this bill came through the committee, they made two Democratic amendments in order. And now they've been blocked, because this is a completely closed rule. And last night I asked my colleagues across the aisle, why? Why did you block two Democratic amendments that were germane, that were made in order? And the previous times we, we looked at this bill. And nobody could answer. My Republican friends just kind of looked at each other and shrugged. Now I'm assuming it must have been a directive of the Speaker. Maybe Speaker Johnson decided that he doesn't even want to pretend to care about bipartisanship anymore. And that's why he told Republicans to block Democratic amendments that were made in order uh, in previous rules. So we are dealing with a completely closed rule. And the worst part is that this whole circus is for a garbage LNG bill. You know who's happy about this Republican LNG bill, Mr. Speaker? Big oil CEOs, fossil fuel tycoons. China is thrilled with what my Republican friends are doing today. Wall Street is applauding them. This bill is awful for hardworking American families. It's awful for people who are worried about high energy prices. And it's awful for our climate. The American people are worried about climate change. They say we, we need action. Now, I don't know if my Republican colleagues got the memo, but climate change is real. And thankfully, President Biden is doing something about it. And Republicans still can't answer another simple question from us. Why do they want to turn LNG into a Wild West that mimics the oil market? For, pe for people that are sick of OPEC and Russia fixing the prices that we pay at the pump every day, like I am, just know that this bill makes it easier for that to happen with LNG. Now, Republicans talk a big game on China. Their bill helps China. And it helps other adversaries who rely on American LNG imports. The truth is, uh, this is just another handout to the GOP's best friends. 
They want to make sure that big energy CEOs and corporations can pad their pockets while raising prices on all of us. Follow the money. Look who contributes to them. And that tells you all you need to know about why we are dealing with this bill today. This entire week is just a master class in Republican incompetence. My friend across the aisle tells us routinely how crucial their bills are, how important they are. And then the bills are defeated, not by Democrats, but by Republicans. Republicans just wasted time debating a rule uh, that would bring to the floor a one-year limited fix to the salt problem that they created with their Trump tax scam. They caused the problem. And now we are debating a rule that they didn't even have the votes for last week um, and is likely to fail on the floor today. Now, last night, they impeached Secretary Mayorkas by one vote. One vote. They had to rush and redo that one before Tom Swazi was sworn in. And the Rules Committee is supposed to meet on a new FISA bill later today, um, our third attempt at that in this Congress. Maybe this one will pass. Who knows? Again, everything we are doing this week is a rerun. Another impeachment vote, the FISA bill, the SALT bill, this LNG bill, all because re Republican leadership keeps bringing half-baked ideas to the floor without knowing exactly where their own conference stands. Didn't work the first time, or sometime even the, or sometime even the second or third time. Guess we have to do it again. Look at what's going on in this country. My Republican friends are barely hanging on to this majority by their fingernails. You would, you would think, Mr. Speaker, that Republicans would look at the results of last night's election and have a come to Jesus moment. The American people are rejecting Republican extremism. They are, they are voting against Republicans' cynical move to tank the bipartisan border deal. I mean, I don't know if you looked at some of the exit polls and some of the commentary about people who were voting yesterday. People are puzzled why my Republican friends made such a big deal about the border crisis and then you have a bipartisan border deal that is negotiated in the Senate, and then the Speaker of the House says it will never see the light of day, and we don't need any legislation. People are seeing through this cynicism. People are against the sham impeachment of Secretary Mayorkas. What a, what a, what, what a, a f offensive uh, waste of time that was yesterday. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know, I mean, maybe MAGA-based donors are impressed by that kind of behavior, but does nothing about anything at the border. It's more grandstanding. People are sick of that. And here's the deal. Uh, people actually want Republicans to work with Democrats to get stuff done. What a radical idea. They're coming to Congress that people would try to work together to pass legislation to help improve the lives of the people we represent. But that's not what this is today. That's not what we've been seeing uh, the last uh, several months. You know, I pointed this out the other day, but I think it's worth re repeating again. You know, the Rules Committee is kind of the traffic cop of Congress. Almost every major piece of legislation uh, that comes to the floor goes to the Rules Committee. You know, certainly legislation of consequence. And the last time the Rules Committee brought a bill to the House floor, that actually became law. It was signed, passed the Senate and signed by the President, was not like nine months ago. So all this time bringing these messaging bills to the floor, you know, the impeachment of Mayorkas, all this garbage that is being brought to the floor, and none of it, none of it becomes law. I mean, like, why are you here? Why are you here? You know, Mr. Speaker, um, we are here today um, considering the same old bills over and over and over again because the Republican Party has nothing to offer but chaos, confusion, and disarray. And with that, Mr. Speaker, I reserve my time.